Welcome to SSA Meetup. Today, I have the nice pleasure to bring together old friends. Um, so we're going to have a presentation from Vlad Bozovic. He's a senior digital innovation manager at Sigma. And he will talk about the value proposition of SSI for tech providers. This is a very meaty subject uh, where um, there are many different opinions on. But let us briefly go through the next slide about what SSI Meetup is about, as we always do. So basically, we've been doing this for many years to empower global SSI communities. And this is open to everyone who's interested. And that means that you can share this content and just it's li licensed with the um, CCA by SA license. And that means you can reuse this content, reuse the slide deck that um, Vlad is sharing here with you and um, just give credit back to him and to SSI Meetup um, for reusing it and hopefully you, you can then use it in your own meetups or in whatever setup you want, because that's the goal of what we're doing here. On the next slide, Vlad will briefly introduce himself. And um, and of course, then we, James and, and I, we will be asking some questions as he goes through this presentation. Vlad, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, James, for having me. Um, OK, so just to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so my name is uh, Vlad. I'm a product manager for um, more than eight, eight years now, um, and uh, I've been mostly working on uh, on building, you know, B two B SaaS like products. And uh, since uh, let's say ten years ago, I got into this uh, broad internet identity problem space uh, where I worked for a company called uh, Telesign. You know, that was you know providing you know this service for big internet brands and big internet companies uh, for sending you know 2FA uh, messages, uh, 2FA short codes um, for uh, you know either using the SMS or the voice channel, and it was also uh, you know providing this uh, data related uh, uh, services uh, um, uh, about the phone numbers and for the purposes of the fraud prevention. And um, so everything was uh, around the, the, the mobile number as, uh, or the phone number as uh, one of the main reliable uh, identifiers that we still use uh, today as well. And, uh, you know, at the time we called this, you know, kind of a mobile identity. And then some, you know, sometime in 2000, 2017, while I was, while SSI was still, you know, very early stage, you know, I got invited by you, James. Uh, to to join this you know uh, U.S. startup called Evernim, you know that wanted to 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 change the world and and how we digitally interact, uh, with, you know with, you know with businesses but also between each other, and um, immediately I I fell in love you know in this whole idea uh, and, and the ambition that the Evernim had uh, and I kind of left my you know position at Telesan and kind of embarked. On this crazy SSI journey, um, and at that time SSI was kind of still, as I said, like very early stage. It was still kind of intertwined with you know with the blockchain and the rise of crypto and so on and so on. Uh, so I stayed, you know, with uh, with Evelyn for a little bit over four years, uh, and I was a you know, product manager for the you know B two B products. Uh, so I was kind of responsible for. Uh, for development of the very first LVK that was facilitating, you know, these initial ARIES protocols uh, that later on kind of evolved into this SaaS product, which we call Verity. Um, and um, yeah, right now when I look at this, you know, time at, you know, we spend at Evernim, I feel that we accomplished quite a lot um, and that the whole, you know, community was benefiting from the work that Evernim was, you know, doing on not only on the technical side but also on the commercial side, and I think you know we kind of contributed quite a lot, you know, to into the open, uh, in, uh, you know, with the open source and uh, some initiatives, and you know, within the development of some of these, you know, uh, community specs and open standards and so on. And uh, yeah, since two years ago, I think uh, I'm now with Sigma uh, here in Switzerland, and um, I'm also working on their, you know. B2B products for you know issuing and verification of benefit of credentials. So yeah, it's a it's a bit long intro, but uh, yeah, just wanted to kind of give you <laughs> give this to, to the audience. Um, okay, so um, what I wanted to uh, discuss uh, 
today is uh, today I wanted to kind of discuss more about this um, value proposition of um, SSI tech providers or, or how companies in the SSI space are you know first of all how, how they are defining the, the, the product definition how they are defining the the, the value that their products are uh, delivering and also some of my own personal experiences you know in doing this um, especially lately as I'm kind of interacting more and more with people who are not necessarily coming from you know from the SSI domain and are not really familiar with the uh, um, uh, the SSI domain, um, and um, I think you know um, this topic. You know, like uh, how to you know how to convey the, the the product definition, how to convey the the value proposition of your like uh, issuer holder verifier software, and also be understood. Uh, uh, you know, by this audience, I think it's uh, not really an, an, an easy task. You know. Um, so, like in in my current company at Sigpa, we do interact quite a lot with uh, you know with governments. We do interact with um, uh, with public institutions uh, uh, and also you know some of the representatives. Uh, and in these let's say lines of business that are not exclusively you know related to digital identity or, or, or the SSI. And also had the opportunity to kind of present, you know, what we are doing, you know, to, to these people. And um, and I found it it's not, you know, not really that easy to 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 kind of convey this message. Um, or I think it, it was um, kind of easier to to um, to to sell the idea of SSI uh, and the and the properties of SSI and its benefits. But I found it more difficult to kind of explain what is my company's role in this new uh, uh, SSI space and how we are contributing to, to this SSI model. Um, and I, I think it's uh, like SSI community is, uh, even though it's a growing community, it's a growing field, but it's still relatively small. And uh, still, most of the people and the companies within these, you know, communities are familiar, you know, to each other. And when we discuss our offerings between, you know, within this circle of, of people, we are relatively well, well understood, right? So, you know, when you say like, okay, we are working on this, we are developing this, you know, they, you know, this is somehow, you know, easily understood when you're talking to this group of people. Um, or when you're talking to your peers within the SI community, but when you step outside and, and when you try to speak to the crowd that's coming from, you know, a more traditionalized business, uh, or that you're speaking with some of the public institutions and so on, then you realize it's, uh, it's you know, this is more challenging and, and you need to be re really be crisp and, and uh, about what you're saying. So I think this is the kind of the theme what, what I wanted to discuss. Um, and um, yeah, and I also wanted to kind of start with this, you know, like uh, I think SSI uh, has had uh, an identity problem, you know, uh, since the very beginning, right? Um, you know, we called it uh, SSI as self sovereign identity, uh, but we also called decentralized identity. And um, I think people nowadays are using, you know, this term interchangeably. Um, but SSI, uh, the self sovereign identity as a name, was never particularly liked, uh, and people tried to ditch it, you know, so many times. Uh, I do remember, like back in like 2017 and 18, uh, at Tavern, you know, we had some um, internal um, discussions about, you know, what other term to use instead of SSI. You know, as SSI had this, you know, negative connotation at the time. But like, you know, like six years later, and you know. As SSI is still, you know, here to stay, and I think it's becoming, um, you know, it's become already became kind of a mainstream. <laughs> so, uh, and it's also kind of found it, you know, found its way into the official communication from government bodies. So, for example, if you read the the, the communication for the new EID law coming from the Swiss Confederation, you will read uh, based on self sovereign identity principles. So, you know. You know, if it's coming from a government, then it's definitely, you know, the term is definitely here to stay. Um, 
and also, you know, we have these other terms when we use to describe the technology that powers the, the, the SSI, you know, we use the web tree, tech, you know, web tree tech, we also use the web five tech and uh, or the SSI tech or the ID tech and so on. But, you know, this also can be a little bit confusing and, you know, sometimes this is kind of a marketing thing and this is how you can, you want to stand out from the competition. Uh, but I'm also not sure if, if it's really helping, you know, with the overall narrative. And um, and nowadays, uh, I do believe that um, you know people are mostly using you know the the verifiable credentials or DIDs and verifiable credentials if they want to explain you know the the underlying technology. Uh, and um, and we also know that we, uh, actually we know that you know, we knew that from the very beginning that uh, this technology of verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers is, is you know so much more than the identity for people organization and things it can do like so many things you know it has the potential to do so many other things and you know it happened that the digital identity was the first application of this technology uh, I, I guess it, because it was kind of the burning issue uh, and it still is the burning issue today but uh, uh, we know that this technology can do you know so much more and and finally also have you know all these uh, different uh, communities and standardization bodies that are all working on you know, different specs used within the SSI um, and also uh, sometimes you know it can be also you know confusing even for myself you know and I'm in this, uh, space for for six years like you don't know where certain discussions are you know, happening and whether those discussions are relevant or they are not really that relevant and uh yeah so sometimes it can be kind of uh, hard to follow uh, yeah um so you know uh, when you try to to explain the 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 value proposition of um, of uh, SSI, I, I believe, you know, here the, the the situation is, you know, much better. And I think the companies and the wider community um, have done, you know, they have done really a good job in explaining, uh, you know, all the all the benefits and all the value prop of, of the SSI in general. I think it's also very well understood. So I'm not going to go like into like details uh, because we've heard it, you know, so many times. But you know. When it comes to properties, I think the most important one is, you know, you have the authentic data, you have the verifiable information, you have the portability, reusability, you have the decentralized, uh, you know, design or architecture. And, you know, when it comes to benefits, I think, you know, we have the, the most important, you have the provenance, you have the enhanced data privacy, um, cross domain trust establishment, and kind of, this all leads to more efficient business processes and the cost reduction and so on and so on. Uh, so I think this is kind of, you know, well understood, but, you know, but when you go like, uh, if you want to go uh, now deeper uh, and to actually describe the, the actual product offering and, 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 and um, the value proposition there within the different um, within the SSI model, uh, I think it, you know that can be the situation there can be a little bit different, and sometimes it's easier to explain, and sometimes you know it's not. Um, I'm glad if, before you go on, I, I yeah. think what's what's interesting about how you describe that core model is you you didn't use language like it's about digital freedom um, and yeah. you know taking back control of data and all these kind of things and. You know, it, it's not that it's not that the SSI movement isn't trying to do those things, right? But it's more grounded in practical, like relatable yeah. benefits these days um, as a way to get to those things. Rather than if you start with that big sale, as you say, it was, you know, governments were allergic to it and businesses found it hard to digest and, and people didn't even know what you meant, right? Um, so yeah. I, I, I like that consistently there's kind of more level headed language now when we when we talk about these things. Yes, exactly. I, I think it's also it's also uh, like when you look at the you know the 2017 and 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 2018, how 
how the narrative back then it was all about you know it was you know using these this big language you know that that uh, was kind of really you know futuristic and promising and 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 so on but uh, also uh, it was really hard to kind of grasp uh, all of that and root it you know and anchor it in some kind of reality use case and now we are talking more you know more specific more uh, more down to earth and uh, i think the, the the language has changed a little bit there and it's not about you know like giving complete freedom and and so on i think you know the government and uh, the the government's bodies you know they are still playing an important role i think they all kind of learned you know this by far you know so far uh, so i think that you know the language therefore has you know has changed in that sense um, okay, so um, yeah, I wanted to kind of, kind of briefly, you know, go through the the, the market, to, yes, high tech market, and just kind of to you know, uh, you know, discuss a little bit about that. So, like, if you if you you know look at the this verifiable financial data model with the issuer, the holder, and the verifier, uh, you know, you have these I don't know two or three sides of that or three sides of that triangle and and uh, if you're looking at the holder side you know you have uh, of course you know the the companies who are providing the the wallets for 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 the holders or for the individuals and like if you're a company that provides a wallet i think it's uh, you know you can relatively accurately it's your product offering it's uh, you know, like we've been using Apple Wallet and Google Wallet for you know, several years now, and um, we've used that for payments, for boarding passes, for membership cards, and um, people already have this mental model in, in their uh, in their head when you describe a digital wallet. You know, they they would kind of come to this, and um, you know, when we um, when we started to explain this uh, digital wallet in the context of SSI and, and digital identity, like it wasn't too hard to send the right message to the audience. Uh, you know, to remember, like Bramley Reed was using you know this analogy with his physical wallet, and you know, it works quite well today. Um, and of course, like you know, the, the digital wallets are the central point of of this SSI model, and it's the only tangible thing. That you can display and that you can showcase to, to the audience if you talk about the SSI technology. Uh, like this is the, the only thing that you know they can touch, they can play, they can feel, and so on. And everything other, uh, all other goodness of SSI technology, like you know, this issuing software or verification software, like all of that can be like you know hidden or buried like deep inside of the actual business you know use case and if you're applying your ssi technology in the right way you know there is really nothing to show like of of, of this of everything else so you know it, uh, i think this is the, the, the kind of a thing uh, so like like in these companies that that do provide the wallets you know they can at least you know, they can at least uh, demonstrate and explain with relatively uh, with relative ease what is it that they are building. Um, also, like on the whole side, you know, we also have this uh, notion of an agent, and and uh, there has always been this uh, thinking that the agent is so much more than a wallet. You know, and, uh, that it can do things for you and represent the, the owner in these digital interactions. Um, but I do think it's uh, the concept is still, you know, far reaching and uh, there are, or I, at least I haven't seen, you know, like some successful implementations of an agent that perform a certain job for you. Uh, so I think the market today, at least for the time being, has settled on the term digital wallet as some kind of a container. Of, uh, of verifiable credentials and the keys, and it can do certain stuff, but it's not like it's not. It hasn't yet become more than that. It hasn't yet become an agent, right? And so we are yet yet to see that. And um, the same thing, like also, 
uh, on the holder side, we also have these, you know, the, the enterprise wallets. Um, and um, I think lately, uh, I'm seeing more intensified discussions uh, in the uh, in the community uh, around, you know, the legal entity wallets or the enterprise wallets. Um, and this is something that's being also pushed by the by the regulatory side uh, and by the new IDAS regulation. Um, but my feeling is that the, the market for this is yet to be shaped, and uh, the product offerings are yet to be defined. Um, uh, you know, by the market, um, uh, there are still kind of you know these different concepts uh, and different mental models being discussed. Um, like for example, is it uh, a standalone web application, or is it the same as the existing digital wallet for individuals? But you, you know, you are holding a verifiable credentials as a legal representative of, of the company. Um, or, for example, the enterprise wallet is embedded into some enterprise software and tools. So there isn't like a single place, there isn't like a single container, you know, that you can call a wallet, but actually wallet is more kind of a, you know, like this logical group of, you know, functions and, and, and containers and components and all of that represents a, a, uh, an enterprise wallet. Um, so I do I do believe there's going to be a push into this domain by many companies. There's a big potential for this. Uh, and we are yet to see uh, more clearly defined product definitions in this, in this space. And do you think that's a symptom of just uh, just being too far from real use cases for a long time? You know that the, these things are very conceptual, but but people yeah. aren't making them specific enough. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, I yeah. think I, I think that, and and also uh, is here like uh, you know it's like. We're discussing too many uh, use cases that the enterprise or the legal entity could do within an enterprise wallet, but uh, or too many, you know, different use cases that are not kind of converging uh, to something. So, and, and, it, it, and also what you said, it's like uh, also not really, we haven't really you know, kind of addressed this. Uh, uh, you know, in depth. Uh, so I, th I think this is the, the main reason. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, now um, about the kind of the so this was kind of the holder side. Uh, also, I wanted to kind of you know touch on the uh, issuer and uh, the verifier side, and. Um, now you have a lot of companies that are actually providing you know the, the issuing and verification software uh and um and here just kind of you know uh, kind of uh selected a few companies uh, uh and and just wanted to kind of see how they are actually you know defining or what what is the language that they are using to to define the you know this piece of uh, uh, software, how they're actually describing their offering. You know what term they're using, uh, languages so on. So uh, you know, like on Microsoft, you know they're using the term you know managed verifiable credential you know service. You know this is what they're using. Um, then we also have you know uh, the 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 using of the term studio. Uh, you know, the Trinzic uses the word studio, so Nataka uses the, the, the word studio. Um, and um, this is kind of the term that they use to, to, um, to describe the some ready to use uh, issuing and verification software that also has a, uh, a user interface, for example. Um, and then uh, Lisi uses the term agent. <clears throat> I think uh, Lisi are probably one of the few or maybe the only one that uses the term agent um, when they're describing their uh, product offering. And uh, also, for example, this also comes with a UI, uh, <clears throat> as they see. Uh, the, the TBD has been using the, the term, you know, uh, self-sovereign identity. Uh, no, no they're, they're using the, 
um, the uh, SSI service uh, to to describe their like well, service in a box that handles you know the full event fabric financial lifecycle and, and so on. And also we have um, <clears throat> uh, the the Norder block has been using the um, they're describing their product offering as a you know no code SSI platform. So it's kind of a very diverse, you know, how how these different companies are actually describing, you know, um, um, what you know, like what do they actually have? You know, so we do have like you know a good, you know, a uh, bunch of terms that that are being circulated, that are being used, um, and. Um, and it's uh, yeah. Uh, I think that the word platform is used quite a lot. Uh, so I think it's the, the most common used term. Uh, we also use the or the company use also the, the the term service if they want if they also kind of want to describe. They're also kind of providing it in. Uh, they're hosting it themselves as a as a SaaS or something like that. And then it's like uh, there's also a console or studio. Uh, if you want to say, okay, there's some UI, you know, the, the, on, on top of it. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so um, so what I've been doing in, in my current job was actually to <clears throat> to to define, you know, exactly this. Like, what is the what is the product definition, you know? What is what is what what we have and what we are offering to the market, you know, and um, and I've been going, you know, back and forth, uh, you know, on this product definition, and we've been adjusting the wording uh, quite a few times uh, in the in the past, you know, these past few years. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of uh, now, you know, let you know the the latest product definition that we are. Using, although I do have to say that even this is something that it's likely going to be changed in the in the upcoming period because um, we feel that we, <laughs> we need to change it as well. Um, so um, yeah, uh, when we describe when I'm currently describing the the product definition that uh, we you know we at Sigma are, are building and developing, uh, I'm you know I'm using the, the term platform so. Developing a digital identity platform uh, for you know, generating, issuing, and verifying uh, verified credentials, and this platform is answering to the to the needs of issuers and verifiers in this you know verified credential data model, and it is intended to be used by by the governments and and uh, private organizations. And uh, platform is, is exposing its functionalities uh, via your APIs, so and it can be consumed either as a SaaS or it can be deployed on premise. So, in these few sentences, I'm actually trying to, you know, this, to to uh, to say like, you know, this is what we have, this is what we were, you know, building, and uh, this is how you can, you know, this is who is it in, intended for, and, and how you can actually use this. So. I do, um, you know, I do kind of think or, or thought that in at least in the past several months that this product definition is kind of uh, nice and crisp. And usually, I don't get uh, too many additional clarification questions, uh, especially when I talk with you know peers from from the SI community. Um, I don't get you know additional clarification questions like you know what is it that you have and, and so on, but when I actually <clears throat> um, try to uh, convey this message to some of the people who are not necessarily coming from the SI community or from that, as I said, are coming from a more traditionalized business, then there's one question that I uh, that I was getting like more and more, and the question is. But what is it really that you're offering? So it's, um, let's say, it's, uh, I'm, you know, I received this question you know, several times, 
And, uh, you know, this got me thinking that, <clears throat> okay, our messaging is either not clear enough or uh, the messaging is confusing or, you know, there's something wrong in how we are, you know, conveying the message. And, you know, because of this, we got to redefine our product definition. We had to, re you know, redo our slides. Uh, we had to redefine the, you know, the key points and uh, that we are trying to to communicate and so on and so on. So it's um, so one thing is like, okay, do you know all this talk and sometimes uh, either if I'm doing it internally for the people, as I said, like who are not really into this, uh, uh, they're not coming from this, I'm not familiar with this domain. Uh, then they still have this, um, you know, feeling that they are not really sure what is it that we are doing. Um, so, you know, when I was getting this question, I was like trying to, okay, to find what is the right answer? What is the right uh, uh, answer to, to this type of question? And um, and then I was, if I needed to, to, to provide, you know, this uh, uh, illustrative uh, high level answer, uh, that the non-SSI people would, would understand. I would uh, usually try to find analogies uh, and examples that uh, they would understand. And um, since, you know, SIPA, their traditional lines of businesses, you know, they are selling you know, security things and physical security features that later on uh, found its place either on the bank accounts or on the uh, security documents and ID documents and so on. So I would I was using you know this analogy. Uh, so I would kind of say that you know the product that we are building and developing is uh, act as some sort of a digital printing machine that you know you supply it with, uh, with the identity attributes, and then our product is able to produce a type of a digital document with all the kind of digital security features, uh, uh, and it kind of works the same way as when you supply the you know the high security printer with the you know the data and produces you the, the passport the id card or the drivers so it's like a kind of a special printing machine but it's digital so uh yeah this is the, the kind of the, the answer that i was uh, but vlad one question it, it, yeah. can it be or is it also sometimes a problem because for many people, they have a perspective where centralized systems basically work well, and and the decentralized aspect of SSI, which I think has been one of the core principles about uh, promoting that, is just not being in, in the conceptual model of the world. It's just not seen as a need or something that is required because the emphasis on trust is is put on on things as they are and things as they are, are okay. But I think from, at least from the origin story, how SSI started, and I would argue also how crypto, at least in the narrative, is still set up is, no, we, we have in this model of the world, we, we think decentralization or some level of, abstract, of abstraction is not in a centralized entity is a problem. I mean, it's a long-winded way of asking, but I mean, is, is that maybe one of the challenges because it's not part of the mental model? Uh, I'm not sure. So, I, uh, as I said, I think uh, right now, um, right now, at least we are not. You know, when we are giving, uh, you know, when, when we are presenting and, and all that, we are not really going like too too conceptual. You know, we are not going like we are not presenting the SSI model anymore. Mm -hmm. in that in that sense, uh, so we are kind of. We're not talking about the, you know, the benefits of, of, of SSI uh, per se, but we are kind of, you know, like really trying to narrow down the, the, the narrative to the specific thing that we are that we are providing. And when you when you like go like really, if you zoom in on the issuing side, just the issuing, so you don't look the whole triangle, you know, you don't look the the whole picture. Just you just want to go like really. Uh, uh, zoom in on the issuing, then you will just get the issuer. And the issuer is, I'd say, is very, um, you know, is centralized, you know, is, it's a centralized service. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's sovereign, you know, uh, within their kind of domain of control. And uh, it's not really, um, it doesn't have, uh, 
how to say, uh, there isn't anything decentralized around the specific task of issuing a specific verifiable credential, you know, that has some kind of legal, you know, value. If you talk about, you know, for example, a driver license, you know, or, or some, some document that's supposed to have a legal value, uh, then, you know, when you zoom in to, to, to this specific entity that is, that is supposed to have, that is supposed to do the issuing, you know, then within their, you know, like, um, um, within this domain, uh, they are very, you know, centralized and, and it doesn't really, it's not so different than using a PKI, standard PKI, you know, system. Um, so um, this is something that, uh, this is something that we are um, trying to, to address and, and to be like really specific, like in this whole, you know, issue holder verified data model, we don't talk about, you know, these, you know, um, decentralized uh, models too much, but we actually say, hey, like you're an issuer, you need to, uh, you, you need to issue a certain, you know, verifiable credential uh, of some sort. Uh, you need to do certain tasks and we are here to actually help you do those tasks. And we, we stop there. So we don't talk, we don't go like further. And we really try to actually, uh, you know, convey the right message to one. What, what are those tasks that we will help you perform? So this is that, yeah, this is what we are saying. Yeah, and, and you know, portable is a word that speaks to some of the benefits of decentralization that are quite like relatable in this use case, right? Because, you know, the, the paper equivalency that you're yes. that you're drawing on there yes. what makes the paper so powerful is is that it's carried with the user can go over else and and yes there's a, there's a framing of that that is that is all about decentralization um but it, it has those downsides you, you just mentioned yes exactly mm. yeah and and also like uh but th there's also like a catch like if you if so like when you use this type of analogy uh then okay people understand okay you know like, uh, Apparently, if you're some entity in a, in a state and you're tasked to issue ID cards and now all of a sudden you need to do it uh, in a digital way or electronically, you know, they will, okay, well, you have a printing machine to, to print the, the, the ID cards and for, for issuing verifiable credentials, you need to have, you know, this software that does it, right? Uh, and you create this analogy, so which is good. But also, if you if you simplify your wording like too much, then you you dilute your value proposition. You know, <laughs> so then there's nothing like really special or nothing really attractive in 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 the technology that you're providing. So you need to somehow you know say like, yes, it's a special. It, it acts as a you know digital printing machine, but it prints you know like digital passports, but it you know prints them with you know these privacy superpowers or privacy super features that allow, you know, the, the end user to, I don't know, perform selective disclosure or zero knowledge proof or something like that. So you need to also be careful not to simplify your wording like too much because you will then lose the, you know, all, all the value. Um, yeah, and um, now it's, uh, yeah, about the, the actual value proposition. You know, what what is the what, what is the value proposition about the of, of the S type of, you know tech providers? And my my own impression is that all of the tech providers in the SSI community they do have a very um, similar value proposition. You know, uh, it all you know like all all product offering and all the communication that we are doing, it all basically come, you know, come, it comes down to this, you know, to these, uh, it's like what, you know, what we are saying is that the you know, SSI technology, it's a, it's a very promising uh, domain, but it is new, maturing, and if you try to implement, you know, these things yourself, it will be either too costly, uh, or it will take too much time, and at the end, you'll probably do like a, a, a lousy job, you know. 
So instead, instead of doing everything by yourself, you know, you should come to us as you know, we are the experts and um, we'll take care of the of all the complexities and uh, underlying technologies and you know we'll navigate through the different communities and sensation bodies and all you need to do and all you need to worry about is your business case and how to consume the apis we expose to you and you know we'll take care of of the rest so uh, i think you know this is this is the narrative this is what we are actually you know saying um but um yeah and and if you kind of um but if you want to kind of go like in depth and, and in, in more detail about the value proposition uh i think it's uh what we uh, what the SI providers are uh, technology providers but we are saying you know we are saying that we are providing you know generation issuance verification we also perform the job of uh you know creating the the right format um, uh, the right encoding the right hashing you know we apply the right digital signatures um we also uh, you know run the specific protocols uh for for issuance and for verification and we also interact with the you know with the other party we keep track of the protocol state and so on, and also in some some cases, we also provide a managed service or or, or, or a SaaS. So, uh, like this as as a value proposition, I, I'm, I, I may be biased, but uh, you know, to me, this seems to be like a quite decent, you know, value proposition, especially if you're kind of looking to you know do implement a certain use case. If you're looking to solve a problem. Then, if we are providing, you know, these things for you, and you you, you worry about the, how how you wanna implement the, the, the use case, while we take care about these things, I do think it's a it's a quite decent uh, decent value proposition. So it's not something, uh, yeah, it's, it's a quite decent uh, value proposition. Do you, do you think it's durable? By which I mean, you know, hopefully these lower level things are maturing at such a rate where they won't always be scary and inscrutable and hard for people to manage. And and so, you know, is it enough to say, oh, hey, you've heard about this cool SSI stuff and you probably re want to realize some of those business benefits, but it's moving fast and it's scary. So we abstract that away from you. And I know I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what you said, but, you know, it, will, will that will that be enough do you think for this this crop of vendors um to to really you know have, have an offering that still adds value for those customers or if the community does uh what it's intending to do and actually you know solidifies these specs uh gets nice mature open source offerings that are used hundreds and thousands of deployments over so they they get sort of properly uh properly worn in you know how how to folks move up the stack there yeah I, I, I do think it's um to be honest i think uh we'll see that uh, i mean so relatively soon when i say relatively soon like in the next two or three years um th there is also one thing that i've noticed um that's um i'd say happening and that may kind of challenge the, the existing you know, business model of the technology, SSI technology providers. Um, and I've seen that, for example, you know, later on in, a, in the next few slides, I'm going to cover some of the, you know, UD wallet, uh, let's say, uh, perspectives. And uh, while I was, while we were, you know, participating in some of the UD wallet initiatives, I noticed that um, some public entities, public bodies, or government uh, agencies that are tasked to bring this technology to the government, you know, and uh, that, for example, they are choosing to implement some of these specs or, or some of this technology themselves. And to me, I was like really wondering, you know, why, why would they actually want to do that thing themselves? Like, why would they like why don't they just you know come to the, to the professionals and uh, they just you know you know like for example we are building a platform and the platform will be 
able to support like multiple credential formats and multiple purpose and multiple, you know, let's say signature types. And it, so it's going to be like, you want to issue a W3C JSON LD credential with, you know, this uh, signature type and, you know, using this protocol, hey, well, you'll be able to do it because, you know, we have an option for this, an option for that, and, and so on. And I'm not sure if the, if the, if, uh, how to say, you know, these, Entities are actually thinking the same way, or 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 they're actually thinking that they need you know some big enterprise grade platform for that, or they're thinking, you know, I'm going to implement a some small, lean uh, service that just do just, that just performs one job, you know, and this is you know, issuing one credential type, and it's maybe it's not like super scalable, but for their needs, you know, it's going to be just just enough, right? So, so well, but what is the profile of, of the people usually that 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 are taking those decisions? Uh, well, I'm not sure about the profile, but it's as I said, like yeah, they are, you know, maybe they are part of the let's say digitalization agency of, uh, of a certain you know, country, or you know, they are like they are, you know, they are part of the or they are extended arm of the government, so they're not really uh, or, or They've been providing you know these types of services for the government, or they've been tasked by the government to to explore this. So, uh, so I'm just saying that I'm not sure that um, you know the the business model, or I mean, I'm hoping that you know, as I said, like this is a still a good value proposition, uh, but we are you know yet to see that this will actually you know be confirmed in the, in the upcoming uh, period but on the long long you know longer term um, I complete I agree with you James I think we you know when we were at Evan we discussed this a uh, few times I think the longer term the, there needs to be some kind of specialization uh, within either within a vertical or there needs to be a more kind of specific use case that you're addressing and uh, that you're kind of tailoring your your product and your solution to address something higher up the stack i think this is the the way that uh, that many of the companies will uh, you know will have to you know will have to take but, but Vlad, I mean, I think what I'm pointing at is like, I think because of the immaturity of the space and at least the impression I'm getting sometimes with some of the things is that when you have technical stakeholders, many of the technical stakeholders very often, they will look at these things and will say, look, actually I can do A, B, C, D all by myself. Or it's not only that, that I can do it. I, I enjoy doing it. It's fun. Yes. And uh, why should I bother with this now? And the whole ecosystem is not in place anyway. So at least meanwhile, I can play around with the with the tooling and and I mean that's at least the impression I'm getting sometimes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I wanted to also you know touch on 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 uh, uh, how these um, let's say SSI products uh, are. Perceived by the by the policymakers and uh, the regulators. Uh, of course, the the most known initiative today, when it comes to the adoption of uh, of this technology, is the is the EU Wallet Initiative. That's being driven by the by the EU Commission and is expected to see uh, initial pilots in 2024 and 2025. Uh, and uh, you know the the EU Wallet is. You know, will become a mandatory for all of the EU member states to to implement and to provide to their citizens. So, uh, you know, when you read the architecture and reference framework from the EU Toolbox Group, which is supposed to define uh, all the technical specifications and the standards for the EU Development Ecosystem, um, you will of course, you know, see the plenty of mentions and, uh, and plenty of uh, terms uh, the the EU Development, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, when it comes to the issuer or relying party software, how they call it, you know, 
that is supposed to interact with the wallets. Uh, there is like no mention about this particular software or this component at all. So you know you will see that uh, that uh, uh, what protocols and credential formats are supposed to be used by the issuers and the line parties, and uh, we will uh, read about the issuers of you know this PID, which is personal identifiable data and uh, this qualified electronic attestation attributes, but you won't see any kind of diagram or any mention uh, what these uh, the, these PID issuers and QEA issuers would use kind of a you know, software or component that's supposed to do this you know job of you know issuing of, of issuing of, of notification uh, and um, yeah this is this is another diagram you know also from from um, uh, area uh, so as you see there's also on this diagram there isn't a you know single box that would kind of uh, fit nicely for this you know uh, issuing or verifying software, uh, and it is somehow um, assumed that uh, you know these PID providers uh, will be capable of performing the issuance to EAD wallet. Uh, so, like. Us, you know, uh, for us, you know, we are the tech providers, and, and we, our goal is actually to to satisfy the need of issuers and, and, and line parties. For us, it's not easy to explain where do we fit into this overall picture. As you know, like we cannot just easily point to a diagram and say, like, hey, like this box, this is us, and this is what we can provide. You know, this is what we can fill in, and this is what we can provide uh, to you. Uh, and as I said, like uh, 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 I've spoken recently to you know, to this organization you know, from all these member states, and uh, you know they have, as I said, like they have decided to build this issuing software themselves. And they, you know, when they show me the, the diagrams, they you know they define this box as a PID and QEA software. This is how they you know, called it, and they also said like you know this. You know, software is performing the packaging, the formatting, and it's running the protocol for you know uh, for, for issuing, and it is you know attached to a technic source. So you know they're saying you know like this software and you know this authentic source is actually you know making this PID provider uh, doing what it needs to what it needs to do. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, this is also uh, the you know the the diagram of uh, of the main work streams that are shaping the the, the EUD, uh, uh, ecosystem, and each of these you know different work st streams is playing an important role. Um, uh, each is providing you know the, the feedback to each other, uh, and also it's supporting this iterative uh, development of the. Of the, of the overall ecosystem. Uh, so I said, like we, we have, you know, we have this common uh, uh, toolbox um, uh, group, it, and it is producing the the architecture and reference framework. Uh, and this document, this RAF, is you know, it contains the architecture, the common standards, and the, and the specifications of the future um, uh, EUD ecosystem. Uh, it's also it, it is also supposed to provide the, the the specifications for the implementation of the you know reference wallet. Then the second thing is you you have this reference wallet implementation, and this is supposed to be an open source project created to support the interoperability, and it's also supposed to help the member states develop their own wallet. So the member states will be able to either choose, you know, the, the reference wallet implementation and then develop something based on that, or you know, they can do something. But they will have this, you know, reference wallet implementation, and uh, and the development of that is also funded by the EU Commission. Um, and then, lastly, uh, we have the the large scale pilots as well, <clears throat> and uh, the large scale pilots. Uh, they are actually developing and implementing their real-world use cases using the reference wallet and also based on the toolbox area. 
uh, based on the specifications from the from this RAF. So so the the large scale pilots they will produce the feedback to the reference pilot implementation, and it will also pr pr provide the feedback to the to the toolbox to eventually adjust the the document and the specifications um, and so on. And all of this is supposed to be kind of you know providing some feedback to the legislative process. So the the interesting th thing here in you know in this in, I'd say uh, diagram is like here we also have you know we have this reference wallet implementation uh, and uh, and all of the actors uh, that are participating in the large scale pilots they are supposed to you know use and test the the, the reference wallet but you don't have any kind of Open source reference issuer or verified implementation. So you don't have that. You have the board, but you have, you have the issuing side, and um, and it is up to the different you know entities and actors to to figure out this part themselves. And you know, like of course we are we are doing this, you know. But uh, as I said, like it's uh, it's not an easy task, and especially if you know like, uh, doing the the interop against you know uh, some implementation that is described on a high level and not really into details it, it can be challenging and it can be a lot of you know going you know back and forth uh, and in, in order to achieve the, the, the actual interrupt um, yeah also like recently um, I've seen you know probably, um, some, I, I do think they are kind of the first public tenders or tender announcements uh, related to the to the EUD wallet. And to me, what was interesting there was also the to notice the wording, you know, that they used uh, in these uh, public tenders. Uh, so I've seen two two examples, uh, you know, in the past two months. Uh, one is the uh, from Luxembourg, the other one from Latvia. Uh, and to me, the you know the Latvian tender was uh, interesting to 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 see the, the wording that they used. Uh, so they you know, they use the they are inviting you know the tenders to uh, for the purchase of equipment necessary for the EUD wallet infrastructure. You know, so uh, they use the term infrastructure, uh, which I you know I, I would assume that. Uh, it contains both the the wallet and everything else that the wallet needs in order to be useful. So also the the, the issuing and verified software, and um, and like at the same time, like when you look at the some of the the wording in the tenders for some traditional PKI technology, and um, if you kind of draw the analogy between the verified credentials and the PKI certificates. You know, you will see in those tenders that the wording that you know sometimes goes like you know, like a state agency invites you, uh, you know, invites the tenders for procurement of I don't know this many digital certificates or this many digital you know uh, signature certificates. So, I mean, apparently in the in the PKI world, when you say you need like 20k of digital certificates for this and that you know it is quite well understood right but like in the ssi roles uh, there's you know there's still nothing like that you know, there you know there, no one is saying like i need thirty thousand or verifiable credentials <laughs> so it's still not uh, not not happening and uh, and that of course you know the reason for that that the market is still uh, maturing and the business models are yet to be confirmed right so so that's why we don't see any any wording like that uh, for you know for the verified credentials but as I said like in PKI you'll see like plenty of those examples like that and they're not asking for agents or studios or like any of, yes, yes, any yes. of these I mean, to, to your point at the beginning right despite the the hand wringing over uh over how we name these things um that like the, the the language here is uh is basic but descriptive right equipment necessary like fill yes. in the blank you know yes, yes. um yeah exactly 
um, yeah, also, uh, one, one thing also was uh, kind of interesting thing uh, that, you know, this thought that was, you know, coming to me, like, when we meet people, you know, like from, from the SI community, it's uh, like we usually, or we tend to, um, we tend to equalize the, 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 the SSI with the digital identity. And, uh, you know, we, we go to a digital identity conference and it's all about SSI. But I do, you know, like the SSI is, or sorry, the, the digital identity is, you know, the, the landscape is you know, so much broader. And I do think, you know, it's uh, SSI platforms, they need to um, somehow, they need to, you know, find their place in this, uh, you know, in this landscape. And, uh, you know, when you look, uh, you know, you can broadly define the landscape, you know, you have these biometric service providers or companies that provide you the, you know, the biometric equipment. You have, you know, identity and access management uh, companies. You have identity, verif uh, identity and, you know, uh, document verification companies. And you also have these, you know, companies that provide, let's say, the mobile wallets or the authenticators, you know, uh, I'd say. Uh, and, like, like, where do SSI platforms actually fit, you know, in this, uh, in this like, landscape? So I, I do believe that the SSI platforms for issuance of verification, you know, they will be this, or, you know, this software, you know, that there will be this, you know, glue that will be, you know, connecting all these domains and, 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 and uh, of digital identity, and there will be this interface between these domains. Um, so I think, you know, like our job, in, you know, as, as product managers in, in these companies is actually to, to you know, create a value proposition um, that will make this, you know, this type of product, this type of product offering attractive. And so, so we find that, you know, find that our, our, our place, you know, in, the, um, in, in this broader identity landscape. There's, like, there's been a trend, hasn't there, for, particularly for the, the bigger uh, providers to offer like overarching platforms that bring together all these different capabilities. So, you know, the, the IAM vendors partner with document verification services, those those people partner with biometric service providers and, you know, various other data sources. And, and so you've got this sort of nesting dolls thing where, you know, the one who the one who controls the customer sort of gets to gets to say what the market yes. landscape looks like. Exactly. So, so I'm interested to to, to see how you think this might play out, you know, because I because I agree with you, you know, the the beauty of portable high fidelity data that, that you get with SSI is it can be the glue sort of that lets you knit together all the different capabilities you need for your for your given identity workflow. Um, but I think the question we've got is like, is that how people will buy it, or yeah. or actually, you know, will they go in the same front door they did before? In which case, this becomes a feature of someone else's uh, platform so yes yeah so so um i'm i do believe that uh it will tend to become a feature of someone else's plat platform uh that uh and when you see also their you know their big giant providers you know they're also taking you know that path already so they are already incorporating the the, the verifiable credentials uh, on a low level, so far, like on a low level, so you can you know, uh, issue verifiable credentials I don't know, using Op0 or uh, Microsoft Azure and, and so on. Uh, but um, to me, it seems like I think the overall trend is going to be that uh, it will, these capabilities will somehow blend into these platforms. So they're not going to be that visible, you know. They're going to be just kind of the technology is going to be just blended and hidden from you know from um, from the user, but it's going to be used. So uh, that's at least my my um, my feeling that uh, this is the trend. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. What, what do you think? Uh, 
how, how does the European initiative compare to other initiatives around the world? And, and, and what are your expectations on how the European one or other ones will kick off some kind of ecosystem to get these use cases going? Yeah, so my feeling is that currently the, um, the European initiative uh, is very, how to say, I mean, it's strong, but uh, um, it's very well known currently. Uh, I think now the the eyes have been, you know, I think that a lot of the world has been looking at the this European initiative and how this will kind of um, um, unfold in the in the uh, coming years. So. I do expect that um, that as with some other, you know, European previous European initiatives like you know GDPR and you know, these data protection laws that uh, that originated from the EU, but then somehow this trend uh, was somehow exported outside of the EU as well. I do think it's um, that we're gonna see the the similar pattern here as well and that whatever gets decided uh, ultimately uh, and implemented in Europe in terms of um, you know maybe how they did uh, how they actually approach the, the governance part how they actually uh, how they chose uh, yeah how they chose some of the some of the standards and some of the some of the technical uh, implementation that this will influence also uh, other markets uh, especially those markets that are uh, that tend to collaborate with Europe so anything that's like closely related you know something in the, the Eastern Europe the, the Middle East or something like that but also you know uh, maybe you know could be going you know across the pond in the US and, and Canada so I do see that uh, okay US may be a different thing but uh, uh, I, I do see that uh, there could be, um, you know, this uh, repeated trend of of um, I'd say, you know, repeating the same model but but somewhere else. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is yeah. This is my last slide. Uh, so just kind of wanted to 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 wrap wrap up and I did talk about you know or, or touch uh, you know few few different uh, concepts and, and, and themes here, but uh, I think the uh, what I wanted to somehow conclude with that uh, you know the market is definitely still still maturing. It's, uh, um, I heard recently, you know, when I was talking with some of our potential uh, prospects, uh, with one of our prospects, and um, and you know, they are coming from a more traditional PKI regulated PKI world, you know, so they are kind of into electronic signatures and um, what do they, what does it, what do they need, or what does it take to have a qualified electronic signature, and how does it look like, and so on. So, but they're of course like monitoring very closely the, the SSI domain, and they expect that the SSI will, you know, pick up and become a mainstream. But he said uh, an interesting sentence. He said like, you know, like you know, this SSI is always like two years away, and I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, probably right. It's a uh, it's been it's been two years away, you know, for six years now, uh, and it may be you know like still two years away from from now, but it's definitely. I mean, I I see that it's coming. Uh, it's coming slow, uh, uh, slowly, and um, and I mean maybe the, because the the whole uh, identity um, that. It may be uh, due to the fact that we are addressing the identity use case first, and the identity is very regulated uh, domain, and, and because it's regulated, it's slow and it takes time, and so on and so on. So I think yeah, market is definitely still maturing. 
the SSL vendors are still searching for the product market fits. Um, the, um, we are still kind of finding, refining the wording, the terminology, and still kind of you know, they're trying to kind of uh, address this uh, uh, to be more precise or more precise. And lastly, I think it's also like really important that the business models are yet to be confirmed. Um, um, there are not too many or very few production implementations. Uh, there are some, you know, like business models that are being used in several use cases. But uh, I think you know the business model on the, on the big scale is is yet to be confirmed, and, and perhaps only then we will see something in a tender like, hey, like we need one hundred thousand of verifiable credentials. But until until the business models are confirmed, that I think we will still not be able to see that. So, so Vlad, I mean, do, do you think uh, do you think this is a bad sign then for this for this EU initiative if it is based on uh, on slightly shaky foundations like this, or is it more that you know actually that project being very concrete and very uh, you know having the spotlight on it and everything is is going to help force us to conclusion on some of these unresolved things and actually will be one of the ways that that we get to maturity quite quickly because the you know the dates on that are fairly aggressive i mean extremely uh, at least by by you know given the scale of the transformation that, that i think we're talking about here yes the, the, the it's extremely aggressive the dates uh, especially taking into account that uh, the technical you know uh, Choices that that were made were like were based on the on some specs that are like made a few months ago. So uh, you know all the, for example, the, the criticism that that the Anoncreds had for a long time that is you know using some not mature crypto and it is like very I don't know like not based on the on the solid crypto and all of that like and you look at the the, the other technical choices that has been made for the UD wallet you know it's, it's basically done on the on the specs that were created for the first time you know a few months ago so like even like really really um really strange choices uh, from, from my point of view but I do think uh, that the whole EU uh, initiative will force some of the, you know, will streamline some of the technical decisions, and that we may not reach, you know, the let's say the ultimate goal, and it's going to be all interoperable and machine readable and all of that. I think we will still have to do some kind of. Um, Manual shortcuts or whatever, but uh, um, but I do think that the initiative will actually force us to you know come to certain conclusions and uh, that we will uh, you know come to certain agreements and that you know we will implement these specs, however immature they are. You know we will implement and we will test this in production and we will likely see some of these. Things uh, you know, like out there in the wild, um, in the next uh, few years. Yeah, yeah. Because because when you add up the EU, you've got Canada, um, which is is not just legislating, but also just uh, you know officially certifying uh, yeah. solutions as being compliant with their national yes. digital trust uh, infrastructure, which is which is based on these principles. You know, you've got uh, Australia, New Zealand, both quite high profile. Um, uh, you know, citizen wallets that are that are based on on this tech. You know, I I think there's reason for optimism for sure. I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with a single thing you've said about you know actually, you know, there's a lot there's a lot of work still to do, um, and a lot of promises that this community needs to deliver on. Like that is definitely definitely true. Um, but uh, I, I think it's going to be a fascinating couple of years, right? Because all of this feels like it's coming together um, at one time. Yes, yes, uh, I agree. And and uh, as I said, as as, uh, as we see these foundations kind of uh, laid down, and uh, as we see these, uh, I'd say the the first, you know, the, those basic use cases implemented, 
then I think only then we will actually see that uh, the you know companies starting building you know some solutions on top of it on top of that infrastructure and then you know then we'll actually see the you know the, the new use cases and the business processes and the optimization of those business processes you know uh, uh, and, and also new products using all of this so I think um, as you say like once we have the this foundation done uh, then I think then we can expect a more more vibrant um, market as well. Just Vlad, what, what, what do you? Oh, sorry. Um, what What do you think ha has What do you think has been the main progress in the last two years? And what What do you think might be the progress that will be made in the next two years? Because I mean, I agree. You know, that it has always been this story about it is just around the corner. But I mean, but also it feels like there is some progress. So what 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 are the highlights that have been made? I mean, what have where have we made progress, and what is coming? Uh, I think you know what's coming. Uh, I do expect that um, you know when it comes to what's coming, um, I do expect. Um, uh, yeah, I, I do expect you know like the you know some of the initiatives within Europe actually to to. Uh, to be implemented and to be executed, and and I, I do I, I do expect uh, these things to be, um, you know, that we actually see those things in action uh, in, in the next uh, let's say two to three years. I would, this is what I would expect, and I think the when it comes to when I look you know back you know two years uh, I don't see too much of the let's say. From the market point of view, too much, um, uh, or so much, uh, let's say, progress. Um, the good thing was that a lot of the companies, uh, I think, they have managed to mature their um, their offerings. So now, 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 you really have a lot of a choice. If you want to implement, if you want to use a set technology. I think there are now, let's say, a lot of companies that can actually offer these types of services, and I think uh, many of those companies are now more mature and they have more uh, uh, mature code bases and, and 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 services and so on. So I think, you know, now they're actually in a in a position to to, to satisfy you know the the needs of their customers, um, and and that's why you know we see these you know product offerings you know coming. Here and there, and also uh, to me, the uh, one of the big um, accomplishments for the whole community is you know having you know these big you know big tech companies coming into the space, um, uh, coming in yeah coming into this broader uh, SSI domain and willing to contribute. So I think now this is becoming you know as a, I'd say more and more mainstream, and it's uh, I don't think there is like coming back uh, anymore. Sorry, James. I interrupted you before. No, I, I was I was just reflecting on on the conversation with and just thinking, you know, how how useful it is to hear because you know, obviously, Vlad, not only have you been in the industry uh, since almost the very beginning, certainly for a very long time, but you know, the the stakeholders you're working with are the kind of people who are driving out these like nation scale um, initiatives, right? So actually, getting getting insights on what. Uh, what does and doesn't resonate with them, I think, is is incredibly helpful um, for people who are aspiring to to do work that has impact at, at scale. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I think. It's good to get these updates um, every every now and then. Um, I mean, it's interesting um, how how the space is evolving, but it, it really feels mo more like with initiatives like this, it might be getting to to this trigger point. Um, let's see how this unfolds, and and let us know uh, since you have yes. a front seat how 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 it unfolds. Yes, yes, yes. We we can we can repeat this sometime next year, and then we'll let you know the 
the uh, the progress at least uh, within the within the uh, EU uh, initiative. Uh, I think sometime next year we should see some tangible progress. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Thank, thank you so much, Vlad. Cool. Well, thanks again. Uh, th thank you for for having me. It was really great, uh, you know, uh, speaking with you. Uh, always a pleasure, James and Alex. So, yeah, let's let's keep in touch. We'll do. Definitely. Thanks. Bye now.